So the next thing you got to do is you got to plug in your uh, Spartan Vortex and mount it on your helicopter and so forth. So let's take a look at these units real quick. So let's say that you had a full unit. So once again, you have your sensor right here. You have your Vortex unit right here. So first thing you got to do is you connect the sensor to the main unit. So the sensor connects right here to this port right here. You plug it into there. So that's how you do it. And then you start plugging in your servos or your receiver, depending on what you have. And I highly encourage you to go to the spartan-rc.com website and look at that guide that I show you because there's a graphic there that shows you how to plug stuff in. I'm going to cover the most basic, the most common ways to set it up. Um, so if you have, for example, either a Futaba S-Bus or a JR, I forgot what the JR system is called. I'm a little bit illiterate with that. But these are like um, single wire sort of connections that go into a receiver. You would plug that into the RX port right here, okay? Then your servos would plug in the same way. Um, and I'm gonna get to the servos here in a minute. But for example, if you had, say for instance, a uh, Futaba S bus radio, you would mount your receiver on the helicopter and you, will, you would plug your, um, your uh, S bus wire to this or um, connection your, your yeah your wire to this RX port right here. If you had a nano unit like is shown here, you would also plug it into the RX um, port right here. I believe this the same applies for the JR system. Again, um, go to the website and uh, take a look at the connection just to double check and make sure. But anyway, that's how you would do that. If you have a spectrum. Um, system spectrum radio then you would plug in your satellites so if you had a full unit like right here you would plug your satellites right here you'd have um, satellite one and satellite two um, so you can see here you got your satellite connections um, I always recommend people to use two satellites not just one it's more redundant safer better definitely want to do that um, this thing will accept the SMX as well as the SM2 satellites, although I highly recommend the SMX for obvious reasons. So that's your satellites. If you're on Futaba or JR, that's where you plug in your S-Bus on RX. If you're on Futaba or JR, um, you would more than likely plug in your throttle, um, your throttle um, uh, connection from the ESC into your receiver. Um, so that would just leave a port open that you can use for power, but also your receiver would be feeding power via the RX. Um, connection here whether it is again on the full size or full unit or the nano um, if you want to use the governor that's built into this then you'd always have to plug in and need to plug in your throttle channel to the um, SV5 um, port right here um, so that's where you want your throttle to go if you're flying spectrum that's where you want your throttle to go SV5 so remember SV5 is always throttle um, so going back to all these um, channels right here, SV123 is swash plate. So as you can see on your screen here, picture um, a swash plate where if it's 120 CCPM, the elevator servo will always be SV1 and then it'll move in a clockwise motion to SV2 and SV3. So SV123, again, clockwise, starting from the elevator servo. Then SV4, it's always your rudder. So same with the Nano. These units are exactly the same um, in terms of how they plug in. So you have your SV123 for swash, SV4 for rudder, always rudder. And then again, SV5 is throttle. And then RX would be an additional power source if you're running, for example, Spectrum, because it would be an open channel. Or if you're running Futaba, it would be your connection to us bus which would also be supplying power to the vortex if you decide to run your throttle through your receiver in the case of futaba then your sv5 channel will be open you can feed power through there that's not a problem so um, that's pretty much the way you would plug this in um, quite easy again one two three swash four is rudder five is throttle um, so that would take care of that. There's other ports. Um, I'm not going to get again into the, some of the more advanced setups, uh, including the governor. I think that once you learn how to set up the unit, you'll be able to figure out the governor very easy. But anyway, you'll see that here you have an RPM port, which is at the bottom of the unit. Um, 
right here. So that would be for your sensor for the governor. And then you have an auxiliary port right there, which you can use to turn on other, like to use it to, to send signal for other items. For example, you want to turn on the lights at, 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 at a night rig or something like that. You could use that for that purpose. Again, make reference to the manual. It's really not that hard to do, but uh, just giving you a, a quick rundown of how to own, how to plug this stuff in. Same with the 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 full unit here same deal you have the rpm the sensor right here and then you have auxiliary here and so forth so all right so i'm going to show you how i um, install these sensors on a couple of different machines i'll show you the nano and as well as the the full unit and here's my 570 um, i'm going to show you this real quick um, to give you an idea on a um, couple of important tips about how to install your nano so this is the VX1N, and as you can see here, it's mounted on this tray. Um, I have all my connections. In this particular case, this would be channel one because of, correction, this will be channel one, this servo back here, because it's the elevator. So on CCPM120, elevator becomes channel one, and then, like I explained before, it goes in a clockwise motion. So servo, um, channel one, channel two, channel three. And then my rudder back here, um, router servo is channel 4 and then my throttle is channel 5 which is a Contronic LA Jive 120 SE. I've gotten questions about whether you can run a Y or you cannot run a Y for power because the Vortex really doesn't have a whole lot of ports. Yes, you can run a wire connection. So for example, RX channel, as you can see here, on the RX channel I have one of the inputs from my BEC which is a Western Robotics Super Hercules BEC plugged into RX channel. If I was missing a channel and I needed it for something to feed power in, I could just do a Y and connect another power source to the RX channel. Um, so that's really simple. And then other than that, just make sure that it's mounted on a very strong platform. And uh, take a look at the manual. There's several different ways you can mount this. You can mount this like this. You can mount it with the wires facing backwards or upside down forward, upside down backwards, or even sideways. In this case, I would never recommend sideways because these things right here are not very strong. You want a strong surface, so you want it to be mounted right on that um, gyro mounting um, plate. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to mount the, uh, the full unit. So here's my Goblin 700, um, just to show you how I install the, uh, the, the full unit. Um, and again, like I explained before, this is totally a matter of preference. The reason why I run the full unit on the 700 is because, um, as I explained before, I travel a lot throughout the summer months to go to events. And when I install the full unit, what I do is I put the sensor under this plate, the main plate, it's just under it. And then my control unit or my computer is right here on the side. So what that allows me to do is that allows me to just remove these two bolts right here, which are my nylon bolts that allow me to remove and reinsert the boom. Um, if I had a nano, I would have to run the, the gyro plate right here, which is fine. I mean, it wouldn't be a big deal. But when you travel every single weekend and sometimes you got to disassemble and reassemble three or four machines time and time and time again every five days, it just gets old to have to do so much work. So I'd rather just have this unit because I have easy access to these bolts right here. But other than that, same setup right here. Um, this is again a Goblin, so on a CP CCPM120 swatch plate, my, servo, uh, my elevator servo, which is back here, this one right here, is my channel one, and then clockwise, so one, two, three, channels one, two, three, and then my rudder, which is back here in the boom, is channel four. And then um, I have a Contronic Cosmic ESC. This will become chan uh, channel five for the throttle, which would be the master out of the ESC. And then the RX channel would be the slave from the Cosmic ESC, which is just nothing more than power. So that would be my setup on this.